Are you guys ready to lose some brain cells with me? Well, I found an interview with a transphobic baboon named Graham Linehan. I've done some research and I found out that Graham has been crowned the most hated man in regards to trans rights. Why have you got yourself mired in this? You're not a trans person, you're not a woman. Why have you made this your issue? Uh, well, the main reason is that women can't speak about this. Has he met JK Rowling? That the language you've used, some of the dismissive terms that you've bandied about have actually increased the toxicity of this C Can debate. you give me an example? Yes, you can... You, yeah, I'll, I'll give you several if you want. <laughs> so, um, what about comparing people in the trans debate to speaking out against Nazis? I mean, that's pretty extreme. Well... Nazis? Are you fucking kidding me? So he's comparing us to people that locked other people up in gas chambers. I'm actually lost for words. The thing is, does he not realise how much of an idiot galaxy brain he sounds like? What are you? An idiot sandwich. Like, I'm, I'm literally losing IQ points just trying to connect the dots. Come on, you're not seriously trying to say that children going to the doctor and saying that they're worried about their gender is akin to children being experimented on in Nazi I, I'm concentration afraid, I'm, camps. I'm afraid I am. That is absolutely revolting. He's actually made a mistake already, and this is how I can tell he's not very smart, because most people who are really transphobic, they won't go on an interview where they know the interviewer isn't on their side or is at least impartial to the situation, so he's a dumbass. Because Lupron, which is, which is um, a drug that's supposed to be meant for end-stage cancer treatment, uh, prostate cancer treatment, is being given to okay, young girls. These... It has never been tested on girls. There's a lot of medication that we take that cisgendered people take, like my hormones, for instance. They are used also for people who are going through menopause or who are taking the pill. They have very similar drugs. I mean, you can't argue against this stupid. What do they say? What's the saying? Um, you can't argue with stupid, I think is the saying. <laughs> No, no, work. don't get me wrong. I'm not comparing it to Nazi concentration camps. That's, that's, that's... And also... Well, that's, that's, no, that's no, basically what you said, was no, that no, experimenting no. on children mm, is what the Nazis mm, did and what doctors are doing today. You, well, uh, This is getting good. You can see him trying to backpedal. Essentially, if you look at the Tavistock, 35 psychologists have quit the Tavistock in three years. Hang on, is he trying to link the high turnover rate of that practice to it being bad for children to transition? Like, that's what I mean. What what sort of galaxy brain... Does that sound... That's one of, that's one of the centres uh, which deals specifically with um, people yes. who think that they want to uh, change their gender. Yes, that's 35 over three years. Do you think that sounds like a healthy environment for children? Like, I'm just trying to connect the dots, and this is what people do a lot of the time when they have a bad argument or it doesn't make sense. They'll just throw out random facts that don't actually have anything to do with the topic that they're talking about. And again, I'm losing neurons myself, which I can't afford to lose, by the way, just watching this. You don't tell children that they were born in the wrong body because they're children and they will believe you. Nobody's telling children that. Children are telling their parents that. Steve, but these are, I've seen kids, uh, there are reports from the Tavistock that children as young as four were brought in. And just to clarify this, because I feel like I need to, because I was just speaking to my neighbour the other night and he didn't even know this. He thought that children shouldn't be able to transition because a lot of people think that when children are transitioning, they're being given hormones or drugs. They're not. When they go, it, it's really good if they go really early to these centres or the facilities that this asshole is trying to knock down. Because it means that they already start a relationship with a psychiatrist and others within the mental health area. And they start communicating the facts or how they feel. And this, it's the psychiatrist and the mental health workers, their job is to determine whether the child is trans. It's not until they're about 12 or 13 that they go on a hormone blocker, which just puts everything on pause. And that still buys them a year or two years to still work out whether that child, teenager, is transgender. And then they end up giving them estrogen or testosterone, depending on which way they're going, male or female. Sorry. Bit of a rant, but I had to get it out there. <laughs> and just to put it into context, 
I was four when I realized I was trans. I didn't know what the vocabulary was, so I couldn't tell anyone that I thought I was trans, but I was four when I realized I was a woman stuck in the wrong body. Well, a girl stuck in the wrong body, you know what I mean. Well, one of the other things that Tavistock whistleblowers reported was that homophobic parents were bringing in their gender non-conforming kids and telling them to fix them, you know? There was a dark joke that went around the Tavistock where they said that in, in a couple of years, there'll be no gay people left, you know? I mean, he makes it sound like we've got some sort of secret agenda to make every man transition into a woman. I hope that isn't our agenda, because who am I going to sleep with? No, now that's why I compare it to eugenics programs and things like that. Comparing to children going to a facility to a eugenics program. Are you fucking serious? Like, I mean, maybe that argument sounded better on paper. I don't know. I've been sued, yeah, okay. I've been I've been reported to the police. Oh, that poor brave man putting himself out there and then getting sued. Do these people do any research? That's the question I have. Even doing a 30 second search on Google, I was able to bring up case studies that completely debunk everything this man's talking about. Trans activists threaten the feminist I support with rape and death threats. Where? Which trans activists are like threatening people with rape or death threats. If that was a transgender person that's doing that sort of threat, that would be all over global news. The news people would be tenting in their pants just thinking about putting out that sort of story because whenever a trans person steps out of line, that just makes news everywhere. I am absolutely happy to step out of this conversation completely once women like D uh, Kathleen Stock and Jane Claire Jones are allowed to speak. quite a lot of women think that they can speak for themselves, thank you. Do you think that those women are actually happy that he's amplifying their voices? I have a feeling when this was put out, they're probably trying to distance themselves away from him. And they don't necessarily need Graham well, Lennon to come in and talk for well, us. Well, the women I support uh, are, value my support and are glad that I'm amplifying their voices. I mean, since when are women afraid to talk for themselves? I'm pretty sure the Me Too movement has definitely set off the fact that we can actually talk for ourselves. And I have to say, women standing up for themselves in the Me Too movement would have posed a greater threat on their life and career than just coming out and being transphobic. I'm sure. saying it's your comparisons tonight that are pretty toxic, coming in here and talking about Nazis. If you want to have a reasonable debate about what's going on with gender identity in this country, we can't talk about Nazis the in the thing, same breath. The thing, the thing about the Nazi comment was, was what I was trying to get... Again, I'm loving the backpedalling here. Like, his argument doesn't make sense, and I just love this reporter because she's just not letting him get away with it. Again, if he had half a neuron, he would have probably done some research into who the reporter was because that's typically what I see a lot of transphobes do. They're at least semi-intelligent when they're putting an argument out there that they go with a reporter who is at least impartial to it. I mean, he should have just hit up Blair Wyatt. Across ...was that this is a hinge moment in history, just like, just like during the Nazis. Fuck again with the Nazis! <gasps> so, guys, this moment in history where trans people are finally being allowed to be themselves, it's just like the Nazis, just like World War II, okay? And we always ask ourselves the same questions. We ask ourselves, what would I have done? Would I have bowed down? You would have been the worst transphobe ever because you can't even put an argument against it. And done everything I was told to do, or would, have I, would I have resisted? Would I have stood up and would I have stood up alongside people who were trying to do the right thing? So the right thing is to be a self-righteous prick who is obviously transphobic. That's what I'm trying to do at the moment. And it's being made very, very difficult. Look, you know, two years ago, we wrote to Stonewall, way before I compared trans, trans rights activists to Nazis. And <laughs> Here we go, back to the Nazis. <laughs> showing that hate crimes against trans people have increased 37% in the last year and say they're proud of their work towards trans equality. Yes, but the reason hate crimes have increased is because everything is now transphobic, including saying statements like, men aren't women. Men aren't women? Oh, trans women aren't women. OK. These are considered transphobic statements. So, so, so the reason that these hate crime figures are going up is because the bar has been set so low for what is and isn't transphobic. I know, isn't the world way too PC? We can't even be racist anymore. Doesn't that suck, Graham? Watching that, 
I somehow almost feel sorry for the transphobes that he's representing just because his argument was so bad. But I do have to admit it was bittersweet watching that lady roast him on national TV. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you have. I just thought I'd do another reaction video because my subscribers seem to enjoy my last one with Russell. So wherever you are around the world, again, I hope you're having a beautiful day. It's nice and stormy here, which I'm loving, but it's extra muggy. So I don't love that. You can tell by my hair how muggy it is. I straightened this and it's already curling. Okay guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.